G'day, fellas, and welcome to the fourth game of your third week of the Outback Octagon. Spawning in, playing over on the east side of the map as the Abbasid Dynasty in blue. We've got Striker. Just a little bit over towards the east, playing as the green. It's Marine Lord with a town center at the top. Look at this. He's gone for a bit of an interesting play. We have got town centers coming up all over this map. It is Marine Lord at the top here over towards his east. One of the famous traders. It is going to be Wham playing as the French in yellow towards his south. Just a little bit over. It's going to be Don Artie once again spawning next to Wham. These two guys spawning next to each other like teammates almost. It is going to be Don Artie on the Rus. Over on the west of the map. Playing as the French. We've got Bruh. And isn't he going to be so damn happy? Look at this. He has got himself in a beautiful little spot here. All by himself. Down towards the south. Playing as the Rus. In the color orange. It's Corp. Above him. Playing as the Deli. In the teal. It's Salami. Next to him. Playing as the Chinese. It's Blade. On playing as the purple. Oh my lord. We have got ourselves a little bit of a little bit of a problem. A little bit of a problem. It is going to be Blade playing as the Chinese. That is correct. We've got a Chinese player today. We've got three Rus players. We've got Corp. We've got Marine Lord. We've got Don. These guys are all on the Rus. We've got two French players. We've got Wham and Bra on the French and Striker on the Abbasid. And of course, the Wallalo God himself, Salami, is on. His hometown, his home team, his home civilization. It's the Delhi. Now, things are going to get difficult for him because he is caught in a little bit of a sandwich. So, I guess for Corp, he's going to be A-OK. -okay. Why is Corp going to be A-OK? -okay? Because he doesn't need wood, or rather, he doesn't need to have any sort of uh, gold down here because he's already going to have access to wooden fortresses. They're going to be, or wooden fortresses, rather, uh, hunting cabins. The problem is, that hunting cabin is going to be under attack from the town center. And he falls back from that position, realizing, hmm, that's not going to work. So what other options does he have? I, I mean, he could get a scout out and look to try and lure these towards the town center. That would be one option. He's going to drop a, a farm down here as well. So things not looking good. So you're already expecting out some early battles here. Now, Striker's got a great spot over on the west. I want to take a look at our French player, because over here... At the moment, Bra is definitely my favorite for this game. And interestingly, he's also got a trade post that is quite close to him. A little bit further away, there's one in the center of the map. So I suspect that these are going to be pretty hotly contested. Now, when it comes to his spawn, I mean, he's got plenty of resources out here. And take a look at this. This trade post is gar guarding up plenty of resources out here. I tell you what, if there's anybody who's looking like a favorite to win this game, it's got to be Bra. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see him go for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I don't think it's bugged, but it might be bugged. Hunting cabin goes down for Corp. It's going to be 27 gold a minute. Pretty damn good hunting cabin there for Corp. He'll be happy with that. Uh, up towards the north, though, we'll check in with Don and see how he's doing, because he's got a hunting cabin down next to his town center. 23 gold on that bad boy. Second hunting cabin over on the berries as well. Only 8 gold for that one, but a little bit further away. It's going to be Wham, who's just chilling out at the moment. And then, of course, up towards this northern position. Once again, Marine Lord being very happy uh, with his spawns. Typically, Marine Lord is very good at, at spawning away from other players. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but we saw him playing as the Rus. I think it was in the first week Marus, uh, Marine Lord was playing on the Rus. And he was just away from everybody else. So we do have some spawns where players aren't necessarily on top of each other here. Now, I'm expecting that when it comes to battles... We're going to see Don Arty and Wham look to fight out, fight it out. But I would just rem remind everybody, I think it was last week. I can't remember if it was Wham or Puppy Paw, but Don was next to those, um, immediately next to one of these guys and formed an alliance very quickly with them and just said, hey, you know, you, you mind your own business, I'll mind my own business and we'll meet in the late game. And they never actually met in the late game. They, they just were friends until the end. Friends until the end. I think Don was actually killed in that game as well. Sucks, Don. It sucks, Don, but... Um, I, I want to also just give a big shout out to Marine Lord. We're currently using his uh, his Twitch chat. Now you can see that in the top right hand corner. I say Twitch chat, but it's actually his in-game chat. We've synced up our in-game timer. You can see up here, 556, 558, 559. Uh, so we've synced that up with his in-game timer as well. So you'll be getting this chat in real time. Now this is the best that we can do. Now it's going to look a little bit weird. As you can see, he's moving around the map and it, it throws you off. Look, it throws me off as well. But unfortunately, that's the best we can do. That's, that's the technology that we've got in 2022. I know they said the technology 
technology wasn't there for chat to exist within spectator modes but we found a way we found a way uh so let's talk a little bit more about this south battle because i suspect that we're gonna have potentially a forward but where are you going blade oh i like it i like it blade going for a bit of an interesting opening here so he, he had a couple of options now number one is that he can make enemies barber can down right here and say hey you, you you're my enemy <laughs> i'm gonna kill you but it's uh, it's up against salami salami considered by many to be one of the top players in the game at the moment and he's on his home team the delhi so you, do you really want to mess with that probably not there's also corp down here now if he wanted to he could probably throw a barbican right here and fuck with both of them <laughs> that that would have been funny uh not gonna be the case today instead just opts to go for a safer play looks to put down the imperial academy along the edge of the map interesting positioning here now one of the reasons why the chinese are considered to be a really good civilization especially in the uh, in free falls in the late games is because of the Imperial Academy. Imperial Academy is going to provide this aura this uh, that buffs up all of the buildings around it. So you can put a whole bunch, you can put up to 32 production buildings within that aura. And by putting it on the edge of the map here, you limit that. You, you take it down from 32, I think it goes down from 32 to, to 16 probably, uh, because you're missing out on, on quite a bit here. Uh, but uh, yeah, so in interesting decision from him for him to do that. He's going to need to put down the Barbican as well, but you can see that he might just be thinking about moving. Now, obviously playing the Chinese as well, he's going to be a big threat to a lot of these other people. And we've seen in other games this week where the Chinese have been targeted down very, very early. We saw a game yesterday where the Muslim was focused down very, very quickly by Averly, despite Averly being across the map from the Muslim because he was playing the Chinese. He was specifically targeted and killed off in that game quite early on so the same might be the case for blade and we can see corp actually going to spot out this what this landmark as well so even if blade thought he was getting away from it all it turns out that is not the case now a couple more uh, hunts have been lured in here you can see that he's actually killed a couple of these bad boys i don't know if this was intentionally done and who it was done by but we'll check in with him and see where these guys are at so we've got corp at the moment who's on a 200 bounty up towards the north don arty also playing as the Rus. he's going to be on 155 bounty and then finally marine lord playing as the Rus as well he's on 615 just just marine lord things just casual marine lord things finding all the bounty now one of the other things to note is that on this map or on on this play style rather the high trade house is a really great landmark for you to play if you're at, if you're the Rus, just simply because you're, it's going to guarantee that you eventually hit that 500 bounty, and you want to be hitting that bounty because the difference between the 500 bounty and the 100 bounty it's huge. Five percent and ten and fifteen percent are massive differences in those bonuses, and that's villager food harvest rate across everything. That's that's not just farms. That's not just berries. That is everything. That is your sheep. That is your deer. That is your boar. Uh, I believe that's also your fish, but it is only villages, okay? It's not your fishing boats, so don't don't count on it there. But uh, yeah, Marine Lord going to be really happy with this. Once again, another isolated spawn for Marine Lord. Now, one of the things... To oh my god. The, 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 this is a free-for-all, and Marine Lord is dropping this down at a time that would be reasonable in the, like a 1v1 where you spawn with a town center. This guy is just on another level. Age up coming through now for Marine Lord. It's going to be the Abbey of the Trinity. Now, obviously, he's got 675 bounty, so he doesn't even need to think about going for the high trade house because he knows if he can just get to the Abbey of the Trinity, get those relics in nice and quickly, he's going to be super happy. One, two relics, three relics, four relics spawn very, very close to him. We've got a fifth relic that's out in the middle of the map. Sixth relic down here. Seventh relic along the edge of the wood line. Eighth relic over here. Ninth relic. Tenth relic. Uh, did we count this one already? We might have counted this one already. So nine relics, ten relics over here. So in total, there's a lot of relics to be had. Marine Lord spawned right in the middle of one, two, three, four. So he is going to be a super happy camper. But speaking of camping and speaking of happy, we got Blade 55555 five, 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 who's looking to put down the second of five town centers. He's slowly but steadily reached his second age and now begins mm, spamming out the TCs. He's got to be careful, though, because I suspect Salami might be looking for blood early. Salami, the kind of guy who ain't going to let three points just go walking. And we see the second town center drop down for Salami. Hold on a minute. We got a little bit of mutual cooperation out here. What do we got going on? Barbican in the middle of the map. Is Blade looking to call the center of this map home? Interesting from Blade. A, an interesting decision indeed. Because in this central location, it opens up your your flanks just incredibly like consider that to to someone like bruh right who is sitting over in this corner he's a very happy camper 
He doesn't really need to think about his backside. He just looks forward. And that, that's all he cares about. He just It's 90 degrees that he's got to focus on. Whereas now all of a sudden, Blade has said, I'm going to take on everybody. He's put himself in the middle of the octagon and he's started pointing at everyone. And I don't know if I like that, Blade. That's kind of scary. I, I like the fact that he went for this landmark over here, but it does feel a little bit exposed. And to be honest, there's no corners that are really available. Every corner's been taken. We've seen Bra over towards the west, up towards the north. You can see Marine Lord as well as Wham moving up in this position. Over towards the east, we've got Striker, who's expanding out there. And, well, let's not talk about the south corner because, uh, well, I'm sure you guys know exactly what I think about that. It is dangerous to be down here. Uh, but I guess other options included this, this little spot over here. Really nice little spot. But uh, we'll keep a track on him, keep an eye on him, and see how he goes. Because that second town center is up. It is working. He's now working towards a third town center. And we start to hear those relics getting picked up. It's not going to be these relics. It's not going to be that relic. It's going to be this one. The last relic. It's always the last relic that you check. Marine Lord is on the way in. You can see he's got those warrior monks coming on in and starting to mine up stone. So it could be thinking about getting out a second town center himself. Now, one of the things to note, I think this is such a smart strategy as well. Going straight up, up for the relics. And then going into the second town center. Wham! Going to be expanding like a madman right now. Look at Wham! Really moving out the network here. And everybody coming out to the center. It's like everyone's expanding towards the middle here. Very, very curious. Landmark positioning here for Striker. It is going to be very... Uh, I'm not going to say very safe landmark, but very standard, almost 1v1 landmark placement. Uh, and the consequence of doing that is that you don't leave the landmark at the back of the base where it's much harder to snipe. You leave it at the front of the base. So it means that if, if ever Striker gets into the position of, hey, I'm going to build a wonder. Well, I don't need to go for your wonder anymore, Striker. I can just kill your landmarks and you're dead. So always going to be something to think of when it comes over to Bra. He's dropped his second landmark, the School of Cavalry, down here. Uh, but keep in mind, he's going to be able to make two more. We see three TCs coming up for him. So everybody doing a bit of a three TC play. Uh, by the same token, it looks like Corp going to be expanding. Hold on. I, I was going to say Corp expanding. I thought I saw a, sec a town center getting dropped down for Corp there. Hold on. Let me, let me check. Nope, no, ta no town center. I thought I saw a second town center for Corp coming down along that wood line. I might be crazy. It looks like he's got enough resources in the bank to buy some things. Uh, but we'll check in with him up towards the North Marine Lord. Going to be dropping down a second town center. Uh, might even be thinking about the third one. He's got so many uh, so many relics that are going to be getting picked up here. Keep in mind, he's the only player in H3 at the moment. So he's got uncontested relic control right now. He could look to clean up every single one of these. And we, if we take a look at the minimap, how much of this minimap has he actually explored? Oh my god. He's explored the whole damn thing. He knows about every single relic that is out there. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually just goes and... Did he already get... Oh, no. I, I thought he already got the relic on that 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 wood line. I was like, oh, I can't believe this guy. He's on on something else, isn't he? If he imagine if he actually gets 10 relics. It, it could be possible. Marine Lord actually getting 10 relics. God, that would be wild. Corp now going to be dropping down his second town center. Finally, he's got himself a nice little spot dug out here, but it seems to be like a non-aggression pact on this south side for the moment. Players just really appreciating the fact that if they do get involved in any sort of early harassment, that uh, it could mean bad things for them in the later game. Uh, and that's quite interesting. But now we see the combat of the defender going to get thrown down for Salami along this edge of the map. Another town center going to get thrown down very close to this trading post. So could be looking to eye that one off. We see Scholars in the middle of the map. Going to get forced out here. Salami with no choice but to head back the other way as the Sacred Site is looking uh, like it wants to be ready for the taking. But unfortunately, an outpost going to be here for Wham as well. He could look to deny these, these Scholars out. We'll look to see what he does or whether he puts these villagers in the outpost. But this could be a pacifist game. But no, it is going to be a denying of the Scholars. Let's see if he's able to do it. Scholar number one definitely getting hit down quite hard there. Going to be losing its life, and with that, it's going to lose the ability to reheal. That is not a good spot for Wham to be, or for uh, Salami to be in. Now, we see walls coming up across the map here as well. It's going to be stone walls coming up for Bra. Take a look at these stone walls. He is getting serious about this. We see Wham finally reaching the Castle Age. He's going to join Salami and Marine Lord in that Castle Age. Scholars still yet to pick up all the relics that are out here, but those walls are going to be going up shortly. Uh, but moving out across the map, it's going to be at least one that he's able to pick up. Trying to get onto that sacred site, but we hear Marine Lord continuing to pick up more and more relics. He's up to five so far, but he is picking them up like a madman. Another town center going to get thrown down by Blade in the middle of the map here. He is moving out all over this map and looking to drop down those landmarks. He's got one down to the south, one over towards the east, and one up towards the center of the map. Don Artie going to be our star of the show, at least at this point in time. Uh, it remains to be seen. We'll, we, we will see. We will see. But uh, I expect big things from the Don. You know me. I, I'm always looking out and hoping that Don brings us something bright. We'll have to see how he plays it here. 
But uh, definitely, I mean, we're 16 minutes through this game. And it's a pacifist run. It definitely seems like that. We, we're going for the 100% completion, no units killed challenge. The question is whether we're going to get it. Because at, at this point in time, we've got Striker now reaching the castle age as well. We'll check in with him. He's gone up with the culture wing. Immediately looking to go into preservation of knowledge. Don now reaching the castle age. It's going to be a high trade house. Now, it, it looks good, but I don't reckon it is. I'm going to go with 162. Oh, I was close. 166. Not bad. Not bad, Don. 166. We'll take a look. Now, remember that that's slowly but steadily going to push him up from 250 up to 500, as long as he's killing the deer that are here. And remember, that also acts as a, um, a drop-off point here. Everybody now reaching the castle age. We see Corp going up as well. Uh, Corp is going to be our yeah, orange player down towards the south. He's walled himself in. High trade house for him. Oh, okay. This one's looking a bit better. I, li I like Corp's high trade house here. I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to go 194. What? I'm losing my mind. What? It's the other way around. Surely you would have thought this one would be better. But maybe it's just not that snug in. Compare that to Don's. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't know. It's just it's just not as good as... It just looks better. I, I, maybe you could have gone here. No, even that's not a good one. But not, look, not bad. I, I like the walls coming in here from Corp. Like he, He's basically just said, look, this is my area. No one's going to take that from me. And you know what, Corp? You're allowed to have it. We'll, we'll let you have this little area. He's, to be honest, he's got a lot of resources in here. He doesn't really need to worry that much. There are a lot of resources in here, as long as he's got hunting cabins as well. He should have a steady income of gold. But now Marine Lord in the north of the map, he is just really running for it right now. Now, Marine Lord's strategy typically in this in these games is a fast castle into a big boom into GG. That's typically his strategy. Now, we'll see whether he does that as he brings back his eighth relic today. In, in all seriousness, though, one of the things that Marine Lord loves to do is he loves to go for, like, elite knights. And so we'll look to see whether that's going to be the thing that he goes for because he's got a lot of neighbors that he can start thinking about taking out. Wham towards the north has begun walling up as well. Now, keep in mind, Wham has got those landmarks spread out. It is going to be the guild hall towards the top of the map. Down a little bit further, we got the Chamber of Commerce. You know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? That means that Wham is thinking about trading. He's not quite trading, at least not just yet, but he's at least thinking about the trade. Uh, so, always going to be an option for him. He'll make sure he leaves it open with that Chamber of Commerce. And we hear the first sacred site is now being captured up by Don Artie. We'll take a look at our sacred tracker and just get an idea of how many there are on the map. There are three in total. So it's going to be one in Don Artie's base. He'll be happy with that. Second one in the middle of the map and third one right next to it. So if there's honestly, if there's anybody who can go for a sacred site victory, it's actually Don Artie. Because the thing is, you're never going to deny this sacred site off Don Artie. But there's no guarantee that Don wouldn't come out to the middle and look to take up these sacred sites. So watch out for that. And we've seen Don go for sacred victories before. We saw him do it on the deli in week one. We saw him attempt it a little bit later in the second week. Did we? Actually, maybe? We might have. I don't remember. There was, there was a lot of games. And now Marine Lord going to be our first player to reach Imperial. Our score lead by far. He is up by almost 1,000 points. Bruh. Going to be a close second place at 3,200. We see Siege Workshop going up for him. I love the base building here from Bra. It's it's very open planning. Like I, I, I feel like Bra is like the kind of guy who has just moved to a new city. And everything has got, like, plenty of space. So they're, they're not cutting up blocks. Like, I don't know about you guys, but in Australia, our blocks are, like, so squeezed all next to each other. When, when I say blocks, I'm talking about, like, plots of land. They're, they're all squeezed and cut up so close next to each other. It, it's it's, it's kind of disgusting. Like, <laughs> I, I, I was looking for a, a, a new block of land to, to build a house on. And they're, they're tiny, like, 300 square meters, 400 square meters. And you're right up against your neighbor. And your neighbor's got a house built right there. And you look at Bra's base and you're like, everybody's got space. It's just like, you know, I'm, I'm just hearing freedom right now. No fences between neighbors. Everyone's happy. You know, uh, uh, and I, I'm talking internally. Like, neighbors internally. Obviously, external neighbors. Like, he... He's role-playing as, as the United States right now because Trump has built that wall and it turns out that it was bra all along. Going for the interesting reverse stone wall gate. Uh, not something that you do see a lot, uh, but uh, it, it will stop any of those pesky uh, siege towers that we do see uh, quite often. Keep going to be coming down for Marine Lord looking to secure up this stone outcropping. In addition to that, secures up the second stone outcropping. Uh, we've got the gold vein and a... Gold vein. Never mind. Okay. I thought I thought they were names differently, the larger and the smaller ones. But uh, we'll have a look in the middle of the map. And uh, we've got a keep that's come down here. So Blade might be under a little bit of pressure here. Wham. Not trading. Instead, going to be doing a bit of keeping instead. Uh, he has moved out. And, oh, never mind. Never mind. 
I spoke too soon. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get a wham is trading in the chat? Blade even in saying wham's keep is pelting my poor mind and then my vil's next sad face. Indeed. Yeah, you, you tell him, Blade. You let him know. Blade, I need you to, I need you to tell them. He, he should have line of sight. He's got line of sight. He's got line of sight. Does he say it? Tell them, Blade. Tell them that you... Tell them what you see, Blade. Say it loud and say it proud, Blade. Come on. I believe, Blade. How much is he getting? 155. Not bad. Say it, Blade. Tell the whole world. We need to hear it. Blade says, I could build a keep by that neutral market too, you know. Dot, dot, dot. Blade, just say the three words and everybody turns upon Wham and takes him down in a blaze of glory. Maybe in a blade of glory. Keep gets deleted! And the secret is kept. The secret is kept. Look at that. Wham says, I am going to delete the keep so that you keep my secret. I'll be honest. I think he's just bought a friend. I think he just bought a friend. And that's a pretty damn good, powerful buy right there. Blade in the chat saying thank you. Avoids saying what everybody is thinking. Impressive stuff there from Blade. Now the village is under attack. Tell him, Blade. Blade, I'm in danger. Oh no, Salami is in danger. Wait, what are you in danger from, Salami? Salami, there's nothing dangering you. Salami just just talking talking a little bit silly right now from who says Blade. All right, we'll ride on board with Don. We'll see what Don's up to. Uh, and we'll try and get a bit of a stock take on what's going on on this map because we've got ourselves quite a... Look, it, it, hello. Hello. Walls have been broken through. Bombards have been assembled. And now the Red Palace is going to try and get up. I don't like the odds of this one getting up, though. This is doubtful that this one comes up. And keep in mind, this is a Red Palace. This is not a keep. And now we can see Salami saying... Uh, or actually turning upon Corp. Look at this. Main Town Center going to be going down. Two Town Centers here. He's got the Golden Gate. He's got the High Armory. He's got the High Trade House. All four wonders, all four landmarks, rather, on the same screen. This is not good for Corp. He's stuck in that corner, and unfortunately for him, it looks like it's going to be difficult. Oh, oh, the Red Palace gets up. The Red Palace gets up, and then with that, it's just... Oh, my Lord, look at the Red Palace, dude. The Red Palace kills every... <laughs> yeah, good luck. Now the Red Palace going to be... <laughs> I love the Red Palace, dude. It's so good. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't fuck with the Red Palace, dude. Holy shit. The Red Palace gets up, and it absolutely fucks. Dude, oh my lord, dude. Do not mess with the Red Palace. Wow. Damn, dude. If there has ever been, like, a landmark that you don't want to have units against, it's the Red Palace. Down to the south, though, it looks like the push is coming through. Corp going to be going down here. He's got a lot of units that are in his base, and unfortunately, not really a much of a response. Ideally for him, the best thing that he could do is maybe look to pull villagers, but unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be much for him. Bombards on the backside going to be coming out. He looks to pull the villagers here to try and save the Bombards a little bit. He's got a couple of Streltsy. It's only a handful. The three Bombards turn around, looking to take down the very first of the Tower War Elephants. They've unfortunately caught themselves out. A little bit of a spot. Stampy going to try his best to get through here. High Armory is going to be able to go down, but we'll head back towards the base of, of uh, Bra. It looks like things have, have gotten good. There's not much green, with the exception of the bodies that are on the ground there. Interesting choice of targets there. Salami now has taken out that High Armory. High Trade House might be the next one that comes up, and you can see it is indeed going to be the next one that comes out. So even though the Bombards look to hold on against these against these uh, these tower elephants. There's one landmark that remains for him. And with that, I suspect that Salami might be able to take the three points here and knock Corp out with that. And we do indeed see the final landmark going down. It is going to be Corp giving up. Hold on. Did he, did he delete, delete that town center? What happened there? That town center went down really quick. I don't know exactly what happened there, but I, that, obviously it was a good game. Corp gets knocked out. No one was here to challenge it, so it's, the points definitely go to Salami. It just looked like I, I, I thought the high. Maybe he just, maybe he just killed the, maybe he just killed the town center and he killed it really quickly. It's a lot of trebs. I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, that's probably what it was. Eight trebs. I feel like that's probably enough. So now there are only seven. There were only seven. And Marine Lord begins walling the entire map. We see mutual walls coming up as you would typically expect. Now, the, the question is, and this is something that I often pose, when it comes to teaming, uh, would you call this teaming? I, I personally, I, I look at this and I don't think this is teaming. Uh, when I see like two players like this that spawn next to each other, I don't know if that's teaming, but maybe attacking people together 
is is I guess where where I would draw the line. You know, it, it doesn't feel good when like someone is defending three v one or four v one or two v one or something like that. But we have seen players overcome it. In the last game that we watched, we saw Casper, uh, who managed to overcome it. Uh, so the question is whether we're going to be seeing any teaming today and whether players are able to overcome that. In the middle of the map, Blade, he's made his way all the way up to Imperial. We'll do a little bit of a landmark check for Blade and see where he's at. He's got the Spirit Way over towards the top side of his base. His Imperial Academy, which has been walled in in the middle here. Uh, look, Blade, I'm going to be real with you. This is an interesting position. This is interesting. Uh, typically, you would see landmarks walled in on the edges of the map. Oh, just like, just like that. Just like that one right there. Uh, but not this one. In fact, if, if I'm honest, I actually do like this. This landmark here provides a line of sight in a circle around this. Uh, so he, he, it's basically like a giant outpost you can see right there. So it's it's a pretty good way to, to sort of get an idea of what's happening. But now Blade going to be under attack. That keep is slowly but steadily working on him. At the same time, down towards the south, we see Camel Archer's coming in from Striker. Striker looking to cause havoc. And, and now, bruh, he's lost a landmark. It's going to be Marine Lord that's pushing in. Finally going to be attacking with some keeps. And just remember that... Uh, or attacking with some keeps. Attacking with some trebuchets. That when it comes to the, uh, the Red Palace, it's very good against units that are not trebuchets. Against trebuchets, though, it doesn't have the range to deal with them, unfortunately. And now we start to see more and more buildings beginning to go down here, unfortunately, for bruh. He had a great little spot over on this western corner, but Marine Lord going to be committing here today with some trebs. And this is great to see because in that in that very first game that we watched with Marine Lord in it, one of the things that was missing was Siege. He ran around with a hundred knights and he was killing players, but unfortunately he was never you know, tapping them out. He was able to take out landmarks, but he never got the final blow. And that was the big difference. Here, though, it looks like he may actually get the final blow. Now, th one of the interesting things, he's got eight relics. I don't know whether he's got any more than eight relics. He may. He may have them in a monastery somewhere else. Because that monastery can only hold up to eight. Or up to five, rather. Horsemen coming out as well. Elite horsemen, elite knights working together to take down all of these buildings. One, two, three, four... That is going to be all four landmarks on your screen. And slowly, players will learn that putting all four landmarks together next to each other is not a good idea. Towards the north, it sounds like we've got ourselves our first cannon emplacement firing off down upon the wooden fortress here uh, of, of uh, Marine Lord. I wouldn't be surprised if this even gets deleted uh, because that is a great way to begin forging an enemy. Towards the middle of the map, it looks like, for the most part, Blade still stays alive despite rolling as China. But now, the next player to get knocked out, it might not be who you think it is. No, it is going to be exactly who you think it is. But the question is going to be whether Salami can get there fast enough. There's one final landmark that remains for him, and it looks like we may have... Out. What?! What? Don Artie sniping the landmark? I didn't even see it. I'm too focused over here on the west. I'm just anchored over here. I apologize, guys. The consequence of building your two landmarks together is right here on your screen. You're not... You don't have your House of Wisdom down there. And we see Don Artie managing to scrounge together. A, I can only assume what was a kill here. We can see Striker is knocked out before... Before Brah went down. I am in awe of this. And now we can see that he's having a little bit of trouble getting back through. There's a whole bunch of trebuchets that were out here. And the consequence of putting those landmarks together, I apologize once again for missing that. I'll try and do my best not to anchor so much. Wow. These guys, they spawned close together. It was hard to tell where the walls begun. You could see there was a little bit of a stone wall that had gone up here towards this wooden patch. But unfortunately, it was, uh, it was uh, uh, chopped through. And Don Hardy going to be cleaning three points up right there. So Imperial Age did come through here for Striker, but unfortunately for him, it's not going to be enough to hold on. And now Don looking to clean out the rest of this area, wants to make sure there are no villagers in here, no potential for any sort of backstab that might come through Marine Lord, obviously the kind of guy who's going to be looking to do that. But we are very quickly down to five players. Things are starting to heat up in this battle, and Wham is well and truly 
trading right now. 168 gold going to be coming through here for Wham. He's trading back to these markets. A lot of traders coming out for him. 32 traders at this point in time. Towards the middle of the map, more attacks continuing to unfold. Keeps beginning to come up, and we'll have to tune in with Marine Lord and see exactly where he is. I apologize, guys, for missing that. I, it feels terrible right now uh, to have missed that, because that, that that's huge. I mean, this is something that we foreshadowed in the beginning of the game. When you put your landmarks together like this, the, the risk that you get punished is very high. And you can see all the villagers were here trying to repair up this landmark. And the real look at the lumber camps. What are these lumber camps? This is a man who knows how to collect lumber. What? I, I, I got to go back and watch this again. What is this guy doing? That is a lot. Oh, oh, he's, uh, he's pushing his, uh, his count up for his, uh, his, uh, thingamabob, his, uh, oh God, I'm losing my mind right now. The house of wisdom, the number. He's trying to push the number higher. Marine Lord now looking to take the base that once belonged to Bra over on that west side of the map. He's found a good little spot here. He's going to be dropping down a whole bunch of archery rangers. I'm going to try and remain mobile here. Down towards the south, we see that army of Salami. Oh, I don't think I've ever said that before. The army of Salami. Normally, I'm talking about the deli when I'm talking about Salami. But Don, going to be super happy with that. Picking up some points. You can see, we'll take a look at Don, actually. I want to see how close he is to that 500 bounty. Still quite a while off, but he'll get there eventually. Give him another 10 minutes or so. I think it spawns once every 60 seconds. Yeah, every 60 seconds. So give him another 10 minutes and he'll be up there. Marine Lord now beginning to work on the walls of Salami. And that might be the next battle. Now, when we come to score, we can see Marine Lord currently score leader. 13,000. Next up, it's going to be Blade on 12,619. Coming in after him. It's going to be Wham on 1,100. And then finally... Actually, uh, Don is also on 1100 as well. In fact, a little bit higher than Wham. And then finally, Salami down on 7000 score. So definitely the weak link here. And perhaps that's why we see Marine Lord looking to, to punish or, or take out some of these walls here. Maybe he just wants to even think about going for the weak link. Trebuchet is continuing to, to unpack over here. We'll take a look at Blade though and see how he's doing. Villagers still out in the middle. Main town center still standing strong. Walled in over on the side here. The Imperial Academy going to be keeping him in the game in the event that anything goes wrong in the middle of the map. Blade with a large amount of siege as well. We'll take a look at Blade's forces and see how many he's got. He's got 13 bombards. Now, these are not clock tower bombards. Where is Blade's clock tower? Did Blade ever make the clock tower? I don't think Blade ever made the clock tower. And if he didn't, that is a smart move by Blade. He's in Ming at the moment. We saw him with the spirit way. We saw him with the uh, the Great Wall Gatehouse. So by not building the Clock Tower, this is a smart move. Why is this a smart move? Because it enables Blade to always be able to Cockroach. Because at any point in the game, he can decide, ah, I'm dying. You know, maybe all of the landmarks get cleared out of the middle. Maybe this town center gets taken out by Salami. Maybe, you know, the only player who knew about this was Corp. So maybe this gets taken out and, and you know, Blade's dying. Well, guess what? He just comes over here, drops down a Clock Tower, Drops down some town centers next to it, and he's back, baby. He's back. He's back. We hear the Grenadiers calling out at the moment. Bombard's still looking strong. Blade sitting at 110 economic units at the moment, and things have broken into a bit of a lull, but pushes are still coming forward. We can see Marine Lord really continuing to dish out damage. More and more buildings are going to be going down here on this front. Scout's going to get cleaned up here as well. The trading for Wham continues. He's managed to wall himself in on both sides now. We see that wall coming up. Wham well, looking very, very good when it comes to his trade. Stone walls all the way up towards this trade line in the middle. Look at Wham. The god of trading walls in the trading post with almost every single bit of it walled in. He can't wall this grain. What is this granary? <laughs> what is this granary from... Bl granary, sorry. What is this granary from Blade? Very curious. That is, that is definitely the case. Don looking to move across the map now. He thinks he might find... Uh, I think he might have found Salami to be the weak link, and he might be coming for him. At the same time, we see Marine Lord uh, looking to push down upon it. Now, when it comes to Salami, where are those landmarks? We've got the first landmark. It's the compound of the Defender. Second landmark. It's going to be that town center. Third landmark. It's the Dome of the Faith. The last landmark, most likely the Palace of the Sultan. Where is that bad boy? It's down here. It is the Hussar Academy that he actually went. So Hussar Academy going to be coming in for Salami. Uh, and uh, we see the villagers in the middle are going to be met. With, uh, with quite a large amount of firepower here. 27 Streltsy, five Bombards looking to push through their way. At the same time, that Marine Lord is coming from the north side. Interestingly, going around Blade, going around China. Now, when it comes to Marine Lord, he's learned his lesson. He's not put all of his landmarks in the same spot. And look what he's doing. He's keeping up 
all of his landmarks. He knows the risk here is massively associated uh, with uh, with him being having his landmark sniped. So he's got the main town center. He's got the Golden Gate. He's got the Abbey of the Trinity. And then finally, he's got the High Armory. So if there's anybody who could potentially snipe him out, it could be Wham. We'll take a look at Wham's perspective. Wham may know about it. The line of sight doesn't extend all the way out yet, but you can see Wham is... Well, Wham is preparing for the late game. That is to say the least. Don now looking to push through the walls. We can see the first wall has been broken down and Salami is going to be the target here. Things not looking good for Salami. We'll ride on board with him and see how he's doing as he drops down a second madrasa. Third madrasa. That's a lot of madrasas. Still yet to research anything from them though. Salami on 135 population. And now we might see the consequence of drawing the shorthand, Delhi. Now, Delhi might be great in 1v1s, where you can take control of the five relics, where you can take control of the three sacred sites. But when it comes to free-for-alls, they're a little bit slower, and you can see the upgrades coming through now. To be honest, they're, they're pretty quick, actually. Three minutes on each of those upgrades, but unfortunately loses two of the madrasas out. Uh, so it's going to be quite a while before he heads back towards the drawing board. Bombards are really going, going quite ham at the moment. Um, up towards the north side, the trebuchets. Uh, going to continue working their way through. Things starting to get serious for Salami as the next target has been well and truly identified. We see Salami actually dropping a wall down here, looking to try and protect Blade almost, it seems. He knew that there was no real threat from Blade from this side. They'd agreed in the earlier game not to attack each other. But uh, now it seems that Don and Marine Lord are going to be going for a little bit of a finish here. Uh, but keep in mind, these guys don't seem to be teaming up so much as they just seem to be attacking the same player. And that's quite different. You know, we've seen teaming up before. We've seen two players actively look to avoid each other's armies and take it down. But here, it's almost like we've got two independents that have worked together to take down a, a, a larger force. And I say larger mainly because of the elephants here. But for Salami right now, that's the only thing large about him. His score in particular. I mean, he's half of Don Arty. He's a third of Marine Lord. Things not looking good. Streltsy holding on. Hand cannon is looking to try and take them out. Manganel going to be able to get a good shot there. Manages to wipe out a fair amount of those Streltsy. So pretty decent shots there. More Manganels on the backside. Bombard's looking to fire off. He's got trebuchets. Plenty of trebuchets. Eight trebuchets still for Salami at this point. Looking to shell down these units. And indeed, managing to take them out. There goes the first of the Bombard. Second Bombard coming up next. He's done a good job to stop this push. Back towards the center though. We see Don Arty. He's dropping down a few, just a few wooden fortresses. Up towards the north, we see the high armory still protected. Wham is just doing wham things. And if there's anybody that you got to watch out, oh my god, it's got to be wham. College of Artillery down nice and safely. Guild Hall at the back, main town center here. Chamber of Commerce as well. Everything well defended. Wham, he knows how to play these free-for-alls. And you know he's got space up the back here. You know what he's thinking about. But now Marine Lord is looking to push down upon his enemy. He's brought some trebuchets to the party. And this is the, the, the difference between the old Marine Lord and the new Marine Lord. The old Marine Lord would have come into this base with 99 elite knights. He would have sieged three of the four landmarks down and then walked away. He would have been thinking he was so damn cool. Look at me, I killed three of the landmarks. And Don Hardy's the kind of guy who just goes in with like six villages and sieges down the last landmark. But not today. This is the new, the improved Marine Lord. The trebuchet number's looking good for him. Posturing now, looking to try and take down that keep. You can see the first keep. Going to be going down here. And with that, that's going to open up the rest of this base. Landmark has been lost. It's the Dome of the Faith. The town center has gone down as well. Now, keep in mind, that compound of the Defender still remains untouched. There was a song. I, I don't know exactly what year it released. I think, I want, I want to say like 1999 was sung by the Veronicas. It's called Untouched. And right now, that is Salami's last landmark. Well, not, not really his last landmark. He's, he's also got one down here. The Hussar Academy. It's giving food though. Pog. Food. You guys like food, right? It's giving food. Yeah. 33 food. It's not like there's any other way in the game that infinite food could possibly be gathered. 33 food. Bombard numbers looking good right now for Blade. He's got pyrotechnics in that extra 12 range. Grenadiers, 4.8 range. Those bad boys can jump up on top of the walls, give themselves an extra two range as well. But now we actually see Salami pushing out. He realizes that uh, that that the wall in might have been successful here. He's going to be able to take out the trebuchets and with that stall out the, any potential push here, the trebs have managed to, to get a bit of a hold going through that wall. And we can see the Streltsy have jumped up on top. Marine Lord being a little bit cheeky here. Going to be able to come back around. And now we've got ourselves a problem because... Uh, well, Salami's been able to hold on against Don. He's been able to hold on against Marine Lord, but 
Now, Marine Lord might be under attack. Blade is heading towards the north. I don't know if he knows exactly where Don is, but if there's anything that can deal effectively with the defenses that are up here, it's 12 Bombards. It's 12 Bombards and all these Grenadiers, and now we might have ourselves a problem, because... You guys might have been laughing earlier the same way I was at the Chinese player in the middle of the map that nobody considered a threat because he's in the middle of the map and someone will kill him eventually, right? Well, who's laughing now? It's Blade. Blade is laughing right now. He's in a great spot. Plenty of gold in the bank. Plenty of wood. Plenty of food. He's trading as well. Look at that. He's got traders going out. Not doing the best trade route. Not doing the best one. Only 80 gold. Nothing like Wham's doing at the moment. You know Wham. Wham, that kind of trader. 200 stone, by the way. 200 stone, by the way. 219 stone, by the way. Wham is trading, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out for Wham. Now, one of the things missing here from this composition for Blade is Spearman. Uh, ideally, you'd love to see like just 20 Spearman or, or so just to prevent any, any kind of charges from coming through. Uh, but we'll, we'll look to see how he plays it. Those traders still going to be out here trading. 81 on that bad boy. Did he find another market? Nope. It's still the same one. I thought he was only doing 60. Forces back here for Marine Lord. Streltsy going to be coming out. Uh, Don Arty looks like he might have begun pushing. I was like, Don Arty just doing his thing. We see... <coughs> excuse me. Dome of the Faith is going to go down once again. Don Arty really looking to, to aggress here on Salami. Apologies, guys. I've just sort of caught my breath. Give me a second here. All right, there we go. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm just dying a little bit. Don now going to be forced back here. You can see him trying to make it back towards the hole in the wall, trying to defend against the defend these bombards. He knows how important it is to keep these bad boys alive. And now he's going to be able to plug that gap, doing a great job. Beautiful job by Dom. I think he might be holding position. Just wants to make sure none of these forces are able to get out and that the, the bombards are able to make a bit of a run away. Up towards the north, though, that army from Blade is still hovering, looking. Now, if he knows where those landmarks are, that could give him a great indication on, on who to attack. Because if he can spot all four landmarks together of somebody, he can really start thinking about putting the nail in the coffin for that person. Knight's going to be coming out. The Bombards have made a little bit of a headroom, a bit of headway. But uh, the problem is, even though they've got that tailwind, unfortunately, <laughs> they're quite slow. And it looks like they're going to be found out. Salami is going to spot those Bombards out. So nice try from Don, trying to plug the hole there. But unfortunately for him, uh, it is not going to be a... Uh, it's not going to be Bombards for breakfast today. It, uh, except for Salami. Salami's going to be eating Bombards all day. Blade calling out saying, Help! I'm in trouble, guys. I'm surrounded. I've got nothing I can do. I'm surrounded by my enemies with no friends to help. I have no idea what to do, says Wham. Marine Lord says same. Salami saying, I gave you a lot of stuff. Give it back. I'm your top friend. Wham says he doesn't want to die. Remember from the kindergarten when they tried to bully you? <laughs> Look at Salami right now bringing out the, the, the kindergarten card. You guys have all got that friend from kindergarten that you defended? Seems like Blade may not have, though. Uh, Blade is in a tough spot here. So a little bit of a stalemate here. Player's not really sure what direction to move in. Now, Wham secured up this trade quite well. He's, all, he's walled in this, uh, this trade post pretty much the entire way around. And players are in a bit of a stalemate. Where do we go from here? What do we do from here? We'll take a look at Wham. I think he's going to be the shining star here. Uh, he is not score lead. He's a little bit behind Marine Lord. But have a look at the resources he's stacking up. And honestly, the more I watch free-for-alls, and this is the same for Mongols, the more I'm liking France. Just simply because they can get extra stone. Stone becomes such a critical resource in these late games because there is a unit cap. You can make up to 200 population of units. But there is no cap on outposts. And we can see Wham is going to be using that. 47 outposts already. He's going to continue making emplacements, cannon emplacements on those. And he's got so much room for more of them. That's the big thing. He can fill his entire base with cannon emplacement outposts. Enemies, they cannot. Unless they're playing French or the Mongols. But even the Mongols are, are somewhat tapped off. I mean, the Abbasid can kind of do it as well. The problem that the Abbasid have got is that it's like a secondary resource, so they're only gathering up a little bit of it. Whereas, like, as the French, as you guys did see, everything is stone. He's gather he's only bringing back stone right here, and that's what makes it so damn strong. So if there's anybody in the late game who's got a chance of dropping a wonder, if there's anybody who's got a chance of, of really having that success, it is the French. Uh, so someone I, I, think, I, I think you've really got to be careful of is the French. But now we can see 
Don saying, I'm trying to kill Salami, to be honest. Uh, he, he definitely is trying to pull, to kill Salami, but one of the things to note is Don's not bringing any sort of reinforcements down here. I think for Don, the best thing he could do is like look to try and put reinforcements here because that way he's he's actually on the backside here of Blade as well. So in the event he comes through, kills Salami, rolls over the top of him, he's able to then take out Blade as well. And remember, every person that you do knock out, not only are you moving yourself up in the rankings, but you're giving yourself extra three points. So it's, it's going to be a big difference there. But now Knight's moving down towards this trading line. We see Wham has reached more than 10,000 stone. More cannon emplacements going to be coming through. Village is going to have to fall back here. Imperial official just doing what she does best, or he does best, and just supervising despite the onslaught. And now you can see Salami saying kill Wham. He has a 19k score. But the reality is we know who is, who is in the lead. We take a look at Marine Lord. He's got a lot of resources stacked up here. Golden Gate's got four tickets in the bank. And it looks like we've got ourselves our first breakaway here. Looks like Blade might be coming in for the kill. First of the keep begins to fire down upon the Bombards. It's going to be, be probably close to one shot here. There are so many units. 13. Boom, baby! In one shot, the, the, the keep is taken down. That was quick. Marine Lord's going to have to head back towards this base. And the consequence of going for that little raid on the gold is now that you might be in dire straits. Streltsy over on the west side going to be looking to get taken out. Springwood's coming out. These guys have got their 12.5 range. Bombard's just chilling out for the moment. Not moving forward. Not looking to push on anything. Just holding down. And he continues moving up towards that northern position. Taking out a lot of those enforcements. And now we see a potential upset. I mean, I say a potential upset, but Blade's a very good player. And on the Chinese, in a free-for-all environment where you are in, in, entering into the late game, there is a solid potential right here that Blade really looks to take this. And now the Bombard's looking to move in towards that keep. Going to be able to take down the town center. Streltsy looking to take it down as well. Firing down upon all of these knights on the front side. The Bombard's looking to focus them down. He's got to be careful here. You can see that the Springwood's looking to fire down upon only the, the gre Grenadiers. Reinforcements on the way in as well for Blade. Plenty of units are now over on the east side of the map. We can see Knights looking to fight it off. Don Artie going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe over here with his opponent, Salami. These guys have, have definitely made a mountain out of a molehill, it seems. But Blade's starting to run a bit out of steam here. He's going to be careful not to lose these Bombards as the Springwoods, as well as their Bombards of his enemy, come in. But things still looking well for him. He's got quite a number of units here. We'll check in with him and see how he's doing. Gold's still looking good. He's got more than enough for more Bombards if he wants to. And with that, the keep going to be focused down here. You can see it's struggling and going to be taken out. Still, a keep remains on top of this hill. In fact, there's quite a lot of... If he can get up onto that hill, that could be really difficult uh, for Marine Lord to take back. And those Grenadiers are going to continue moving forward. And now we see the consequence of ignoring the Chinese player. Yeah, you might have had China in the middle. But all of a sudden, China is going to be breaking out here. And Blade looking to take a name. He begins steamrolling down towards the south. I'm not sure what he sees down here. Might be this keep that he's going to be going for and looking to clean out the rest of this army. Grenadiers going to be moving in. You can see them firing off, lobbing their heat-seeking grenades towards the enemy. Another keep going to be coming in for Wham. Wham looking to extend the trade route. Going for the full wall in as well on the trade route. And we had a little bit of a lull in the action, but now all of a sudden things are really starting to heat up. Bombards firing off on the backside. We can see that just all the reinforcements now coming in. He's got to be careful not to lose these. There's a lot of units here. I think he might be losing the Bombards. Now those keeps... All, all the keeps have gone down, rather, but the Grenadier's going to have to fall back and try and keep these Bombards alive. You can see the Springwood's doing a great job of cleaning it up, and Marine Lord looks like he might be able to hold on with these Bombards going to be going down. And it definitely seems like the cleanup on R3 is occurring here, and Blade might have to regroup and retreat. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Bombards doing what they do best and just exceeding everyone's expectations. That extra range here for the, uh, for the Bombards going to really help, or rather, extra range for the Springwood is going to help against these, but it looks like the cleanup is going to be happening. Blade exhausting that push. He's down to 47 villagers at this point, and unfortunately for Blade, I mean, it was a valiant effort by Blade, but unfortunately, I don't know whether it's going to be enough, and this is the consequence of going for that Imperial Academy on the edge here, is because now all of that gold that you could be getting from having the Imperial Academy right here next to your, your archery rangers is just not getting picked up. It's not getting doubled. Yeah, so you lose a lot of it in the late game. Towards the south, more units under attack. Keep coming down here for Marine Lord. There's a little bit of gold down here. We've got Salami looking to build up strength down here. At the same time, Don, as well as Wham, might be looking to team up Salami, you poor guy. You know, everybody loves Salami, it seems, except for these guys. Hole has been broken through the wall. We can see the, the cannon is here as well. Uh, Salami asking Blade to help. Marine Lord saying, I'm telling you guys... My war versus Blade will be eternal. There you guys go. But we know the truth. We know the reality is that if Marine Lord pushed right now, he'd be A-OK. -okay. 
because Blade doesn't have Blade does not have the military or the, the economy to back this up. Sure, he 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 talks the talk, but he does not walk the walk. The economic numbers here for Blade are very, very shallow. Compare that over to Marine Lord, and he's sitting on 100 military, 100 economic units. Up towards the north, we continue to hear... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's happening. It is happening. Wham is not even trading anymore, ladies and gentlemen. He is just going ham. Wham is hamming right now. He is going absolutely ham. That is crazy to see the amount of... And I, I guess this is the point where I start wondering, like, are outposts too strong? You know, it, it wasn't the fact that every single civilization is putting down outposts in their enemy base at three minutes that made me think it. It was more when Wham just starts making a million outposts and upgrading them. But to be fair, I don't think it's that the outposts are too strong. I just think it's that in, in late game, French are actually legit and people just didn't know. Like, sure, French don't seem that good when you look at their bonuses in, in, in a vacuum. Okay, but when you say, okay, well, let's let's put it to this post-imperial stage uh, of a game where, you know, people are uh, sort of forming alliances and they're, they're, they're looking to expand trade, all that sort of stuff. Well, now French becomes a reality because not only do they get that stone coming in, but they get an increased amount of it as well from their Chamber of Commerce. So there's a lot to consider for the French, and I do think they're quite strong, but Salami going to be coming out now, sieging down that keep, and with that, a whole bunch of the stables. So this expansion point for Wham is going to get shut down, at least for the moment. We do see he's begun expanding towards the middle of the map. It's quite literally the Great Wall of Wham right now. Look at these bad boys going up the inside here, over towards one edge of the base and over onto the other side of the base. The Great Wall of Wham, one piece of absolute beautiful beauty. You know, the rumor is that uh, the Great Wall of, Ra of Wham goes for 16 kilometers uninterrupted. Salami in chat saying, Wham is trading for 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 over on this this western front it looks like the war between blade and marine lord is going to be coming to a close here marine lord is looking to push in he's going to be repelled by the grenadiers but just remember that economy right now for blade it's not looking pretty he's down to 41 gold he's got traders as well keep that in mind he's looking to trade over towards this western flank but the the castle is up that's going to be preventing any sort of trade from coming out here or at least prevent it from coming back down towards the south we see we've got uh salami who is trying to defend against Don. Horsemen, as well as horse archers, trying their best to, to push back these forces. Spearmen in there for Salami as well. Salami honestly doing a great job holding on. He's been attacked by multiple people throughout this game. To be fair, he did take out Corp nice and early, but I would suspect he's reaching post imp stage as the Delhi, which is a pretty decent spot. He's got triple Madrasa. Everything has been researched. He's got full upgrades for everything, actually. How much is he getting on his Hussar Academy? Hussar Academy now getting walled in as well. We'll take a look at it. It should tell us. I wish it. I wish it just told us here. Plus fifty-seven. Damn, dude. That what a poggers landmark. I. Uh, that, that is such a good landmark. Fifty-seven food. Could you imagine fifty-seven in the late game? There's there's literally no other way to get food. That's crazy. That is so good. Rebuilding coming in for Wham now. Uh, it, uh, we can see where <laughs> we've got the dock coming in for salami Driftnet's going to be getting researched here he wants to buff up that hussar academy oh yeah it's, it's up to 58 food now this will take him up to 59 and, and th that'll be the breakthrough that he needs once he's up on 59 food a minute or 59 mood a, 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 a tick oh man that, that oh there it is 59 i'm just like get get your golf claps out ladies and gentlemen wow what a landmark the best landmark in the game full stop no return just just go to the next paragraph wow what a game a little bit of a push now coming out for salami a lot of red units on the ground here don definitely gonna be racking up the kills though also gonna be racking up the deaths back towards the north it looks like marine lord yet to really push on he's gonna be coming in from this west side now looking to try his magic or try his luck over towards that angle salami gonna be holding on 64 villages for him at the moment 86 military pushing through on this cavalry mass he's gonna need to bring in reinforcements but now we can see that uh that cannons are out as well as elite royal knights we'll take a look over at wham and see how he's oh my lord oh geez salami on 7,000 health and holding on against wham on 22k don on 15k marine lord 19k i mean he's just been fighting non-stop and they're coming in once again for salami dude why don't these guys don't like salami they don't like salami they don't like the deli they don't like meats these guys must all be vegans this is terrible more Grenadiers over towards the west. Nesta B's coming out as well. Honestly, I like the Bombard play, but whatever floats your boat. 
Knights having to fall back. Arbolatria going to be coming out as well. Elite Arbolatria. These guys have got all their upgrades. Wham just looking amazing. Look at Wham's base. That is crazy. It, he is going across the entire map at this point. And, and look at the resources he's got as well. More than 12,000 stone in the bank right now. Wham plugging the gap. You can see the Arbolatria going to be able to fire off the cannons on the backside. Looking to get repaired up. Villagers going to be doing a bit of a wrap around. The heels come out and look to try and hold on. Unfortunately, looks like all those horsemen going to be going down. He's managed to try and get that cannon down. It's on 384 health, so no, no health compared to the Clock Tower Bomber. But speaking of Clock Towers, we haven't even seen any Clock Towers out. Now looking to clean up that keep over on the western flank. And with that, it looks like the traders are going to be able to survive here. Now, keep in mind, Marine Lord is continuing to, hovering, uh, continuing to hover around this area. Salami looks to hold on as well. He's managed to repair all of his landmarks back. So he's got the main town center. He's got the Dome of the Faith that is back up. So he's sitting at four out of four at the moment. The hole is plugged. But there are so many units here for Salami. He's just going to keep on plugging it. We can see a little bit of a wrap around Jones through the tree right there. The chop through is coming. Look at him go. Wham, looking to chop through. He's done a great job so far. There is a hole in there. He's also cleaned up that gap. And now the force that to be reckoned with is coming. Oh my lord, Salami is in trouble, ladies and gentlemen. Wham has broken through. Don has broken through. And Salami is on the back foot. We'll tune in with him. We'll ride on board for a bit. But they definitely sense that there is weakness in the air. And the weakness is Salami. Actually, that's not weakness. I fought it. Sorry, that, <laughs> that, that was unnecessary. I apologize. Because weakness in the air, you know, the, the smell. Anyway, anyway. Down towards that south side, though. We'll, we'll tune in with the battle. We'll see how it goes. Because we got a two-on-one down on this south side. Up towards the north, we've got those, that in that eternal battle between Marine Lord and Blade. The Chinese versus the Rus. Forward keep going to be thrown down here by Wham. 44 villagers coming out. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's every single villager that Wham's got. Actually, it's not. In fact, he's got 60 military population. It feels like he's got so much more than that. It's impressive how he manages to do it. Villager's going to be able to drop that keep, and he, he's got no shortage of, uh, of stone as well. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple more keeps getting thrown down here. And he can just throw these away, honestly, with Wham trading. And this is the power of French trade. In, in my opinion, you can't let French trade. I, I genuinely believe right now the best position in this game by far is Wham. I don't think... Honestly, the, the more I watch this game, the more I think Wham is just going to win this game just simply because of his trade. Wham is trading. Like, unironically, Wham is trading. This is a huge threat to everybody else on the game, and they are just letting him go. He's got a decent trade here, a central trading post. He's on the French. One of the best traders, if not... Sorry, I, I will I will stay, say that again. The best trading civilization in the game, with the exception of maybe the Mongols... And now the keeps continue coming up. Dropping down an outpost. Looking to get some line of sight. Trying to find those landmarks. He spots out the compound of the defender as well. Very, very shortly. This Once this outpost goes up, he's going to know exactly where it is. He will turn his attention towards it. We see villagers moving towards the north. But just remember, there's no landmark that they can drop down. We're not talking about a Chinese player who's thinking about dropping down a clock tower at the last second. No, 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 no. This is a different case. Towards the, ba the main base of Blade, though, it looks like Marine Lord is looking to take control of the game. You can see that he's got the spirit way in his focus. Blade is completely out of gold, I would suspect. Yeah, down to 265, 41 millets or 41 unit population at the moment. Blade is pretty much out of it at this point. The best case scenario for Blade is looking to... Oh, my... What? <gasps> Don't do what Don Artie does. Oh, my... Is he thinking about a wonder? I think he's thinking about a wonder. It could be a wonder. We'll have to wait. We'll have to see. He's got a lot. How many tickets does Don have? How many tickets does Don have? <gasps> Don's got 41 tickets. Oh, he's got to go for it. Don's going to go for a wonder victory. I love it. It's such a smart move as well. He's really far away from everybody else. I think as soon as Salami is down and dead and dusted, Don is going to be looking to be pulling out the trade. He's got plenty of tickets in the bank. How many is he going to need? I think he's going to need... Let me just do some quick math here. He's going to need 40 tickets to be able to afford the the uh to be able to afford it he's got 905 gold a minute coming in as well passive gold remember in addition to his hunting cabins across the map he's gonna have that that high trade house 250 gold a minute coming in from that and with that salami's landmark's gonna be going down first and second landmark going down over on the west side of the map we do see that this the third one might go down but wham has fallen back wham has said hold on a minute salami's not the threat the real threat it's that wall in particular Don prepping things like an absolute madman. And interesting to note, like, if, if he takes out Salami, then he doesn't have to think about this flank. 
right? Because this is a big dish. This is a big deal that he's going to have to think about. Is that there's the possibility that a flank might come in from the south side if Salami is still in the game. So it, it's going to have to. Ex it, it would it mean that he has to extend his forces. But now he's got Wham up here. That's b that he's blocking pretty well. Wham is blocking Marine Lord, and Wham is also blocking Blade. So he's gonna have to make a, a, a they're gonna have to route all the way around Wham, or Wham's gonna have to delete some walls. And that's gonna expose Wham's trade, which Wham doesn't wanna do. But at the same time, Wham doesn't wanna lose. Now, remember, Don's also got four landmarks. One landmark. Actually, that's not a landmark. That is a landmark. Yeah, that, that's a landmark. That was good singing right there. I, I sounded like uh, that. What is it? Moonbase Alpha? Wah, 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 wah. Uh, 6,500 Golden Gate. Uh, we have got... What other landmarks have we got? And the High Armory. Uh, and then, of course, the High Trade House, which is down a little bit further. Uh, so, I mean, things right now for Don are looking better. Uh, better than ever. Uh, Don still yet to do the trade zone. Uh, so we'll watch to see how he plays it. Outpost coming up over here. Now, these are cannon emplacements. These will kill the last, the last uh, landmark here. Marine Lord looking to break through. Everybody just looking for a little piece of salami right now. He's made it all the way down to the south. And we can see the elite horse archer is going to begin working on the Hussar Academy. It's a slow and painful death for salami. Death by a... Th quite literally death by a thousand... <laughs> a thousand arrows. Uh, in, in fact, 6,500 arrows to be, to be more accurate. Uh, he'll make his way down here eventually. But salami is holding on for the moment. And now we see that... That compound of the defender is going to be going down. You can see all of the emplacements firing off towards it. Wham is slowly extending his reach out across this entire map. He could be thinking about going for a wonder himself. I wouldn't be surprised. He's got space for it back up here. The problem is there's not a lot separating that wonder and a potential strike on this corner. If trebuchets move in here, Salami's landmark does get destroyed. It's going to be that compound of the defender. He goes down to one landmark remaining. Chan Center and Dome of the Faith are, have been taken out. And now slowly but steadily, that final landmark for Salami is going to be going down. He did look to make move some villagers up towards the top side. I don't know where they've all gone, but unfortunately things aren't going well for him. Don might feel like he's in a bit of a comfortable position here, but he, he falls back from the Hussar Academy. Knight's going to be in here for Wham as well. They are looking. Blade. Oh, Blade. Blade going for a little bit of a cheeky play here. Now, keep in mind, if I remember correctly, there should be a trading post along this edge of the map. Or was that the last game? That might have been the last game. Yeah, there's only two trading posts in this map. But Blade with a mass of markets down towards his south side. He could be... Oh, he could be looking to trade with someone else's market. There are stone walls, though. We'll have to see what Blade looks to do here. He's got a lot of markets. And now we've got Salami looking to defend against Blade. Finally, the tides have turned. So Blade says, hey, I heard that you've got only one landmark left. Let me in, brother. And then Salami says, but brother... Don't betray me like this. I just want to play for points. Please let me live. The bombard goes down. And with that, it looks like Blade's going to have to head back towards his main base. Don getting a whiff of it. He says, hold on a minute. What are you guys doing down there? That's, those are my points. You ain't going to play with those. <laughs> you can see they're calling out the spots, the locations right now of where the landmarks are. We'll take a look at the main army here for Marine Lord. He's looking to clean up landmarks. We've got the Spirit Way. But the thing is, Marine Lord ain't, isn't going to kill these landmarks until he knows where the rest of the, the landmarks are. You can see he's now expanding over towards the west as well. We're beginning to reach that point in the game where, where things are getting serious. Enemy has destroyed Blade's landmark. So it's going to be the... Uh, it's it's going to be that Spirit Way that did go down. Now remember, the rest of the landmarks that come down here for Blade. He's got the Barbican. He's also got up towards the north, the Imperial Palace and the Great Wall Gatehouse. The starting town center for Blade, as well as the Imperial Academy. But he still has one landmark that he has yet to build. If we take a look at Blade's perspective, he has got one landmark that he has yet to build. It is the Astronomical Clock Tower. The question is going to be whether he looks to build it, whether he looks to drop it down. But now Don is going to be coming in. But we've got ourselves a little bit of a contest here. Don going to be able to break through these walls. And with that, he's going to gain access to the Hussar Academy. Bombard's going to be looking to focus it down. A couple of knights in here as well. Arbor Latria moving forward. I don't think there's any way he's going to be able to stop this. Wham, unfortunately, going to have to head back towards his base with his tail between his legs. And our fifth player out today, it is going to be Salami, who is knocked out. Or rather, our fifth place today 
is going to be Salami. Nice little sneaky bombard here attempt from Blade. Very cute, Blade, but unfortunately, you're a few seconds too late. And now the question is, who drops down a landmark? You can see Blade looks to drop down the clock tower. Where is he putting that clock tower? I can't see anything. There's just attacks everywhere. Minimap doing minimap things right now. Landmarks going down all over the map. You can see the main town center are going to be going down for Blade 2 as well. I wouldn't be surprised if Don looks to pick up this one as well. Indeed he does. Looking to focus that one down. Blade. In the ruins of his ally, former ally's base. Looks to pl place down his clock tower. He's under attack. Multiple angles. We're going to change perspective. We're going to go have a look at Marine Lord. Less, much less attacks over on Marine Lord's side. And now we hear another landmark that's been destroyed. It's going to be Don killing that landmark down to the south. Now, Don should know about the next landmark as well. Indeed, he does. The wooden fortress is going to spot that one out. We see more landmarks going down. Blade needs to get down here to the, cl the clock tower. Villagers are making their way over. It's going to be a single villager at the moment. Both of these landmarks going down. This could be Blade getting tapped out here if he doesn't get villagers down here soon enough. First villager is going to be coming down. I keep selecting the trebuchets because the game's got a weird bug. This could be the end for Blade. The Bombard's slowly crawling up. He needs to bring more villagers here. We'll take a look. He's got a second villager coming in. Blade right now, 15 villagers are out. Two villagers working on the clock tower. But unfortunately for him, those Bombards are going to be moving in. Three villagers now tasked towards that clock tower. Blade may have bought himself some time. The Bombards have turned around. All of the landmarks for Blade have gone down. The Barbican, the Imperial Palace, the Great Wall, the Spirit Way, the main town center. The last one is this Imperial Academy. And now Don looks to break down the walls. Go! Tap those hammers, Blade. Tap those hammers. You can do it. I, I don't believe. I don't believe. <laughs> I don't believe. Hurry! Hurry! He's almost here. The Stealth Forest. He's, he's wigging out. He's going a bit crazy. Don playing with his meat right now. <laughs> what is Don doing? Don's letting Blade live. He's trying to play for points. Blade's almost doing it. No, the Bombards. No, the Bombards. We can see the progress down along the bottom here. He's at 4K. And with that, unfortunately for Blade, it is going to be good night, sweet prince, as Don sends him home. Good night, sweet prince. A nice attempt. But unfortunately, 90% of the way, Blade gets tapped out. Does he come back into the game? When they finish this landmark, does, does Blade revive? Imagine if Blade came back and he's like, Welcome back. I'm here. I am back. But now up towards the north, we've got our next push that's coming through. It's going to be Wham. Still no wonder in any corners yet. Three players remain. Don Artie on the Rus in the east of the map. Wham on the French in the north of the map. Marine Lord in the green on the west of the map. Uh, and he's also playing the, the Rus. Uh, I, I, I think I mentioned the Sis for the first two guys, but not for Marine Lord. He's playing the Rus for anybody wondering. But now Don Artie's still rallying out units towards this southern position. He's going to have to reassemble his, his base. He's trying his best. He's got plenty of production on the way out here. But keep in mind, the main threat that he's going to have are those landmarks. He's got the two landmarks. <gasps> Where's that high trade house? It's nice and safe on the back. Don Artie's done himself a lot of trading. Take a look at that. Don might be thinking about doing a little bit of trade. Don't do what Don Artie does. Well, if that is if Don Artie's doing trading. Plus minus one stone a minute. Age of Empires 4. I don't know how you keep doing it to me, but I am impressed. I am impressed. Reinforcements continuing to come for Don. A lot of a lot of uh, a lot of royal culverin as well as the bombards on the backside, or cannons rather. Army here for Wham, looking very big, very juicy. He's sitting on 91 economic unit population. Marine Lord over on the west, and the question is, who drops a wonder first? Who blinks first? I suspect a wonder will be dropped as soon as that third player is kicked out, because they both. I think everybody realizes right now that we have three titans. And when there are three Titans in the game, two Titans will defeat them. But looking to try and hold on for his position, you can see he's just rallying units into the middle. Not really a cohesive push. Streltsy Mass beginning over on this eastern flank. A lot of horsemen going to be coming in with the horse archers. Don Artie going to be trying to defend over on this eastern side. A lot of forces are over here. He's lost down that main town center. It's about to go down. Going to be the first landmark that gets taken out. Wham! Going to be the guy that takes it. Marine Lord. The question is, what, what is he doing? Because Don looks to engage now. Horse Archers on the backside going to be able to pick it through. And we see a keep going to begin do going down here. Where are the trebuchets for Don? That's going to be a question. Where are the bombards? Wham got no shortage 
of stone. You can see he's actually got less gold than he's got stone. Forces coming out non-stop for him. He's going to have to change his trade from stone over to gold, and that's exactly what he's done. 100, 161 gold going to be coming in there. A lot less gold than what he was getting stone. But that big push coming through. Oh my god, look at the forces from Don. Don Artie looking huge right now. Uh, Don just absolutely destroying this, crushing this push right now. Says, get back to your base, Wham. This is mine. You ain't welcome here around these parts. And Don Artie's landmark does finally go down. We'll take a look on board with Marine Lord. We'll see exactly what he is up to. Because Marine Lord over on the west side, I mean... We, we can see that there's still some yellow buildings down here, but Marine Lord has expanded out over to the west side quite well. He's got trade going on here. A nice little market over towards this position. He's going to be giving him a pretty decent bounty. You can see him trading up towards this spot. He's got 36, apparently 37 traders. Never mind. I don't know how you can have 37 traders when there's only 36 total active traders, but Age of Vampires for your numbers has never been your strong game. So we'll, we will forgive it. But where is the where are the army for Marine Lord right now? It's, he's just chilling in the base. Hasn't actually maxed out on population. He could be thinking about dropping down a wonder. But just biding his time at the moment, it seems. Letting the other two fight it out. He knows that a, a, one, a landmark has been killed recently. Now, Don could look to drop down a wonder in the corner. By the same token, Wham could do the same thing. But it makes it very easy, very accessible. Uh, interestingly, 3k stone just sitting up here as well. Don going to continue holding on. Marine Lord saying 1v1 is for Chads. Look at these guys. They're, they're, look at it. Marine Lord asking. He's like, yo, is he owning you or what? <laughs> yeah, he's owning him. Don is doing the owning. And Don's got plenty of bank. Look at these guys just chatting it out right now. It is. It is oh, Don says he's got plenty of bank. Uh, I don't know what your definition of plenty is, Don, but it's not that. You know what plenty of bank is? That's, <laughs> that's plenty of bank right there. That is plenty of bank. And remember, he's still got the guild hall. Oh my god, he's still got the guild hall! 31,000 gold in the guild hall right now. Wham, he doesn't even need to trade right now. He's got the guild hall. Wham, with 31k in the guild hall, was waiting this entire game. He's like, eh, I'm an hour into the game. Eh, we'll just keep letting it build up. It'll come out eventually. He is playing right now like the Dutch. He's got that many banks going down. That is what a... <laughs> oh, my Lord. That is impressive. Wham! Going to be taking out a loan very, very shortly. 31,000 gold going to be coming out of his account. And, I mean, I, I just watch this and I get more and more impressed by the French the more I see this. I mean, obviously, the, the, uh, you know, to be fair, Blade didn't have the perfect game playing as the Chinese. And maybe that's been the consequence of, of, of being the Chinese in these early games is you do get focus out. Marine Lord saying that he's going to chill for now. He, look at that in the chat. He's chilling for now. He's not going to gang up. He's not going to force anyone's hand. He's just going to let these two guys go at it 1v1. And if I had to pick a winner out of these guys, when it comes to attrition, it's probably going to be Wham that takes it. But remember, every second that goes on where, where Marine Lord is not fighting, he gets stronger. Just like Vegeta. He's sitting inside that, that uh, hyperbolic time chamber. He's getting stronger every single second. He is, he is trading. He is gathering up resources. He is just chilling out. He's biding his time. And with that, his stock increases. He looks stronger. Still yet to take out that gold. 32,000 is now your number. We'll have a look and see what the ticks are. 32,280. Let's see how much it goes up. I think it goes up by 140 a tick. We'll double check it though. Uh, I'm, I'm going to guess that from here, it should go to 32,420. But let's have a look and see. It might be more than that. Come on. 32,280 to 32,480. So it goes up by 200 a tick. Three, two, four, eight. But now we can see that Don might be struggling a little bit. Don might be struggling a little bit. 17 Springhold, 67 Strozzi in Q. You can hear his under attack from multiple angles. Don was once in a great spot. He was looking very good, but now it seems like Wham has awoken. Wham's got plenty of production out here. You can hear him just producing units nonstop. And the thing to remember is Wham playing as the French has cheaper units. And this is something that is often disregarded when you're playing in these late game situations. You can see here, Wham only paying 60 food and 30 gold for an Arbolatria. That is a great price. You can have a look right there. I'm assuming he's got, yeah, he's got the discount. So it goes from 20 to 25%. By the same token, 105 food, 75 gold. He is just funneling out these units. He still doesn't even need to take the gold out. It's just chilling out for the moment. He doesn't need it yet. He knows that so many, so much resources in the bank. Still more than 60,000 food for him. 
You can see Marine Lord at the top right hand corner just hovering or, or, or smashing his mouse around the map there. Just looking. Trying to look and see what he can spot out. Bombard's on the backside. Going to be continuing to reinforce his position. A couple of keeps going to be going down as well. But it definitely seems like the, the, the push is coming to shove here with Wham. Puffy Paw's brother looking to try and take out this position from Don. The first landmark has gone down. It's going to be that town center. The Culverin on the backside. Beautiful micro there from him. You can see that the Springholds with the extra 0.5 range going to be able to tee off a few shots towards those Culvs. Culvs going to be able to one-shot them out though. Just remember that. They've got that extra bit of damage. It's going to enable them to bite through the extra health of the Culverin. Or rather of the Springholds with that Siege Works. They got up to 240, uh, 240 health. Uh, so they're not able to be one-shot by a Bombard anymore, but they can still be one-shot by a Springle, or by a, uh, a Royal Culverin. Things looking good for Wham, though. The push still coming in. Marine Lord still biding his time. We'll take a look at Marine Lord. He, he might have just gone to the toilet, could have gone for a bathroom break. He's stacking up the resources very, very heavily right now. And now it looks like we're going to have elite archers coming in, so I don't know whether Wham has just forgotten about the gold that he's got in, in the... Uh, Oh, here we go. If no matter what, you're waiting on the 1v1 because that's more than that's more Chad mode. I can tap out to save like 10 minutes, but I still think non-Chad mode is smarter. Keck W. Chad would be white. <laughs> there you go. There you guys go. A little bit of an insight as to where these guys are at right now. Don looking to try and tap out. And to be honest, I mean, uh, whether you like it or not, look, I, I like Don's position, but I don't like it that much. And now we see a bit of a push coming through here. Where I'm just in an incredibly good spot. He's going to continue pushing down. We'll take a look at where, where Marine Lord is and what he's up to. Because right now, Wham is just in a really good spot. But Wham's gold still looking to struggle. We can take a look at the Guildhall and see where it's at. He's on 34k gold. So we're not going to have to look back to that. He is just flooding in. Give in to your dark side. It's FFA. You can see Don trying to whisper into the ears right now of his opponent. Just struggling to make anything meet. And Wham really, really looking to... Uh, to push out here, but Don gonna be holding on a lot of Streltsy here. At the same time, is there a trebuchet that's taking this down or Bombard? Bombards are taking down the keep right now. Wham gonna be losing that keep. Wham gonna be falling back. Wh where, what, what's happening to Wham? Units going idle? Wham eliminate? No, Wham dropped! Wham dropped from the game! Wham dropped from the game? No, Wham, not like this. The, the tree has fallen on Wham's line again. No way! It happened again! It happened in Golden League and now it happens here! Wham! The tree! For anybody who doesn't know, Wham and Puppy Paw live in the same house. They were playing their Golden League games on the same night. And in the first game in the series, a storm comes through. A tornado, a hurricane comes through and knocks a tree down. The tree lands on top of the line that gives the internet to Wham. And now... Unfortunately, Wham is tapped out of this game. And with that, we're going to have two remaining players. It's going to be Marine Lord, who's in a prime position. And good game gets called. Don Hardy is going to tap out right there. Your victor here is going to be Marine Lord. An unfortunate set of circumstances. But Don Hardy says, thank you. I'll take the second place. What a an ending to this game. I can't believe we've seen the tree fall down once again on Wham. Oh, my Lord. This feels terrible for Wham. He was in such a great spot. He was in such a good spot. An absolute killer ending right there. Anticlimactic. It looked like Wham was going to roll over the top of Don Artie. And it looked like he probably would have rolled over Marine Lord as well. I don't think there was any possible way that Wham wasn't going to roll over Marine Lord and Don. I suspect he probably would have won that game. We'll have a look at the kill counts there. Don Artie on top, 1158. Marine Lord in in uh, in fourth place, rather. Salami ahead, 795. Wham on 1,079. You can just see how much ahead he was. We'll take a look at, at the resources that were held there. Total resource count. You can see towards the end there, Wham as well as Marine Lord stacking up the res. Don was down to almost nothing at the end there. But keep in mind, there is 30,000 gold that is not showing on the end there. So, oh. Bit of, bit of a weird one, bit of a wild one. Fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm going to leave a link in the description of where you can watch Marine Lord because he is whose chat we were watching today, whose chat we were using. It's been an absolute pleasure. A little bit of a crazy ride right here, but, uh, but hey, I hope you guys have enjoyed it and uh, unfortunate stuff for Wham.